Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. I'm really excited about today's video, so I'm gonna keep this intro super short. If you're a small business owner, an artist, or a crafter, anybody that wants to get their name out there, I'm gonna take you through 12 different tips on Canva in order for you to create the best looking graphics possible for your brand. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when you type in canva.com, you're taken to this landing page and it's asking you to sign up for a plan, like an account. And there's three different plans that you can choose from. There's Canva free and then Canva Pro. We're gonna be focusing mainly on these two today. And then there's also Canva for Teams. And this is probably geared more towards larger operations, so full-fledged businesses, things like that, where there's an entire team of people who will be going in to use the plan, the platform, okay? So like I said, today we're gonna to be basically comparing these two and talking about the various features within. So I encourage you to at least sign up for Canva free right away to start diving into the platform to learn all of its basic features. And then from there, you can go ahead and start a free trial on Pro, which is always nice to be able to see how far it can go. And then if you decide that you like it, you can go ahead and commit to the Pro plan, which I highly recommend it. I have the Pro plan. I've had it for, I mean, honestly, probably about five years now. And I don't know if I'd be able to put out the kind of content that I have been without it, even just as far as like my YouTube thumbnails and, and all that stuff. So Canva Pro is absolutely a fantastic value if you plan on using it a little bit. Okay, so for today's tutorial, I am logged into my account, which as I said before, is a pro account. So we'll be able to see the pro features and, and things like that. So it'll be nice to kind of see, again, how far you can take it. So for the second tip, as I said, the first tip is basically to go ahead and register for that pro plan because it is worth it in my opinion. And the second tip for today is to identify and implement your branding. So before you start creating finalized designs, you want to establish your brand's colors, fonts, and the overall style using the brand kit and this consistency is gonna help your final designs look more cohesive and professional. Basically think about your craft fair booth or your retail space, whatever you're working with, and imagine your signage, your business cards, posters, banners, etc., all that stuff. You want all of these elements to look uniform with one another to really establish and hammer home your branding. Now, the way that we can start working on this and establishing this is on the left-hand side, there is this brand tab, and you can see that there's a crown here. So wherever there's a crown, that means it's part of the pro plan, okay? So if we click on this, it'll take us to the brand kit page. And at the very top, it says, introducing your brand, easily set up, manage, and grow your brand with all your ingredients, assets, controls, and workflows in one place. Replace logos and images across existing designs in just a few clicks and find all of your brand assets and templates from one place in the editor. So this is a really nice hub for all things with your brand. And if you click on this, you can start to build it out a little bit. And here I have all of the colors that I commonly use. So I really like this like plum shade here and then kind of like these earth tones on top. This is a really, really uh, just nice palette that I've used um, all throughout my YouTube thumbnails and things like that. I also have kind of like um, a fluorescent kit set aside for my YouTube thumbnails and that is obviously like more eye-catching. A lot of times with the YouTube thumbnails, you want them to be really bright and vivid so that they stand out apart from other YouTube thumbnails. So I kind of have these set aside for when I want to just have that extra attention. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff throughout here. Um, I must have just really liked this color because it's just one color. <laughs> Maybe I used it for a flyer. If you wanted to take something away out of your branding kit, all you have to do is hit the three buttons over here and you can either copy it to another branding kit, make a copy, or just entirely delete the palette. So we'll take that out. Yes, delete it. And then now I'm back with these. All right. So 
You can also go to fonts. So by default, when you open up a template on Canva, there's going to be different fonts ready to go, basically. And you can have these preloaded so that if there is a subheading on the graphic, all right, or if there's like a large heading on the graphic, you can actually assign it certain fonts, okay? So this is really nice to be a huge time saver for you. For example, if you know that your branding is going to have like two or three different fonts, you can already have these loaded in here and then just have different fonts for different sizes on your graphics. So this is a really, really nice time saver on here. I actually haven't really gone through here and assigned my fonts. I should because I pretty much use the same ones over and over, but this is a great way to kind of do it from the get go. And then that way, when you load up a template, it's already preloaded with these. All right, and then we have a bunch of other different options that you can add in here. So if you have an icon or a logo or a certain graphic, you can have those in here. Um, any kind of repeating photos that you use. So for example, one of the things that you could put in here is if you have a QR code that's already designed and you wanna just apply it to a bunch of different stuff, that would be a good example of something that you could put in here, okay? So just get creative with everything that you can put into the back end because it's going to save you time in the long run instead of having to like find these colors and find your fonts over and over again. Tip number three is to utilize ready-made templates. So Canva offers a really wide range of pre-designed templates for various purposes, such as social media posts, business cards, flyers, all sorts of different things, Instagram stories. You can see if we toggle through here, there are templates for basically any kind of situation that you can think of, okay? So definitely make good use of these as a starter. It gives you a really nice head start. Browse through the template library to find one that matches your needs at any given time. I'd also recommend browsing through the options to spark new ideas of things that you might not already be doing at your booth. There's a lot of different things that you can do on here. Okay, so let's just assume that you have found a design that you like. So we're gonna go ahead and click on a flyer. Okay, so this is an eight and a half by 11 flyer. And let's look at some different templates over here. And let's see if we can find something that we can start to edit and turn into something. Um, just gonna try to find something with a decent amount of writing. Okay, let's actually go with this one. I kind of like this one right here. It's pretty simple. It's kind of what you want with the craft fair, you know, it's got a little bit of personality to it, but really you want the focus to be on the writing, okay? All right, now, as I said before, every template can be fully customized. So the images, the graphics, the fonts, what's written on them, every element can be customized, okay? So let's actually start with the background color and get started there. So we have like this kind of white cream color. If we click on it, it'll show you the document colors. So this is kind of nice because when you click on the color for one item, it'll actually show you all the colors that are being used throughout the entire graphic, okay? So this is kind of a nice tool right off the bat to look at all of them and say, okay, what color could I swap in? And it still feels good compared to all the other items. So let's go for more of like a cream color. And I think that would look good with the green. So let's go over here to this cream color and yeah, I, I like the way that looks. That looks nice with the green. Gives it just a little bit more personality, I guess. And then the font, let's say that you um, need to write something different in here. Okay, so I don't know if these are, this is a graphic for nails or bath bombs or what, but we're gonna change this up entirely. Okay, so let's think of, let's think of a business that we would see commonly at a craft fair. So let's say like a candle making business, all right? So let's just say Judy's Candles. That's the business name, all right? Now that we've got that in there, 
let's change the font up because that looks a little bit meh, looks a little bit boring, right? So if we go over here, we can click and it's gonna show you a whole bunch of different fonts. Now, in my pro account, I've used kind of like the same fonts over and over as I was saying before. And the nice thing is that even though I don't have them preloaded in, into my brand kit, it still knows that I use these fonts a lot. Okay, so this is a really, really nice tool if you don't want to go through, you know, kind of building out the brand kit and all that stuff, it's still going to recommend things that you use. So let's see how a few of these look. Eh, maybe too strong. That one's eh, too strong. That one looks kind of nice. And that one, not very legible for a poster. So the nice thing is, is that you can pretty much click on these just browse around, you know, just play with a bunch of them, check a whole bunch of different fonts out and play with it and see if there's something that looks really nice. So as we go through, just kind of looking, this actually looks kind of nice right here. Kind of like the way this looks. So let's say that we're going to stick with this one. Okay. So we clicked on Cardo. All right. And if we come up to the top back here, if you want to make it bold, we can make it bolder, which is probably nice for a poster header. And you can even underline it if you want different, all different things that you can do with it. Okay. And then now we want to swap in an image. All right. So this is where we can start to get a little bit creative. I'm going to talk about this in two different segments. Okay. But if you want to look up the stock images that they have, we can type in candles. And let's say that, uh, well, this looks kind of good. This looks kind of good. I think this would look good here. So let's take this out. So if you click on it and then you hit this little trash can, it'll ask you if you want to just delete the image or the frame around it. So let's hit delete image and that circle still remains. Okay. So we can swap in this one and drop that in there and it's still retains that shape. So that's kind of cool. If you don't like the shape, you can just come back up here, delete the frame and then start over, put the picture back in and resize. So it looks good. All right. And there we go. Okay. So that looks kind of nice. We'll drop that there. And then you would just kind of continue on throughout the entire graphic. Now, as I said before, every element can be customized. So even these decorative elements, if you want to switch out the colors, say you want like one shade darker, you could go maybe here, right? Just change that up just a touch. Maybe this one could be like one shade lighter there, something like that. And then before you know it, you're going to have the entire thing done. So, it doesn't take long to, to start having fun with this. It's, it's a lot of fun to play around with. And again, keep in mind, you have templates for every single size. So think about business cards, posters, flyers, banners, all sorts of stuff that you can do. Now, one really nice thing that you can also do, and it is my fifth tip is to upload your own images. Okay. So this is where you can really start to personalize how your graphics look. So we just used a stock image for this particular set of candles. However, if you've had photos taken of your products or other photos that you might want to show off on your graphics, all that you have to do is click on this uploads tab on the left hand side right here. And then you can upload your files right from your computer. Okay. So as you can see here, I have all my booth reviews that I've done and various logos that I've had to use, and you can start to incorporate these different graphics into your design. Okay. So all that you have to do is upload it and then you would just drag it over and then resize and move it and do whatever you need to do with these graphics. Okay. So being able to upload your images is a fantastic feature on Canva. Okay, now another fantastic feature that Canva has is the ability to resize graphics. So this comes into play when you have repeating graphics that will be placed in different areas of your booth, but maybe they need to be like a different shape or a different size, or maybe you want to 
For example, design a poster that's based off of your banner or something like that, where they're kind of based off one another. It's a great way to get a head start where you can take an existing graphic, click on this magic switch button, which is again a pro feature. You drop down to browse by category for resizing, and all of a sudden, you're going to be able to resize this graphic into whatever you need it to be. So let's say, for example, this was going to become a square on Instagram. So we have 1080 by 1080. If we click that and we hit continue, it's going to ask you if you want to resize your current design. Okay, so basically you would save over it and you would lose the previous version. Or if you want to copy and resize, so you would just create like a duplicate and that way you don't lose the original. Okay, so let's just say that for this example, we're going to resize this particular design. We click on that. And then immediately the graphic changes to a square and you'll notice that things don't quite line up as well as they could. So now all you have to do is a little bit of editing. So let's say, for example, you wanted to move the graphics back into the corner. All you do is just highlight the two of them and then drag them wherever you want them to go so that maybe they're in the corners a bit more. The, uh, the image, we can probably make it a little bit bigger now. This line in the center, the solid line lets you know that it's centered on the graphic. All right. And then we can just start to create it so that it looks good in a square format. But as I said, it's a great feature that gives you a lot of versatility and it gives you a huge head start from a design perspective. Okay. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about Canva's design elements and effects. So Canva offers a really wide range of design elements, such as shapes, icons, illustrations, all sorts of different things that will enhance your graphics. Experiment with different effects, such as filters and transparency to add visual appeal to your graphics. Uh, these elements, they really can go a long way in giving your designs some personality. So let's do something fun here. Let's actually turn this graphic into an Instagram story where there's going to be a little bit of video involved. If we go back up to the magic switch icon, we go down to social media and then we select Instagram story and we hit continue and then resize this design. All right, now we're back to this look here where it looks like a phone, right? It's the shape of a phone like you'd see on an Instagram story. And now what we're able to do is have a little bit of fun with the, de the design elements. And uh, let's look at some stickers. Okay, so we click on the word stickers and all of a sudden we have all these really fun like animated graphics. And there are a lot of them okay so if we go to social media stickers and then we hit see all now we get to see a whole bunch of stuff that it's it's fun it's animated it gives it some life and it just looks it just looks great all right so as i said before this is an instagram story so if you put the instagram icon on here maybe something like this You could put it up here or you could move all this up here. And slide this down so it's nice and centered. OK, great. That looks cool. And you can type in follow me on Follow me on Instagram and get 25% off and you got the little icon. Again, this is just a really terrible example. I mean, trust me, I'm just ad-libbing the hell out of this. But the point is, is that there's an endless amount of graphics here. I mean, literally, as you start to scroll through here, it is absolutely insane. To be honest, I should probably be using this in some of my graphics, but... The fun thing is, is that you can come through here and just really start having fun with it. And this is going to take like your presentation online to the next level. A lot of times vendors have 
good intentions with wanting to hop online and put themselves out there, but they really just don't know how to go about getting started with designing this stuff. And you don't have to be an expert, okay? And Canva is the perfect example of how you don't have to be an expert in this stuff. It's literally just 100% trial and error. And the more that you do this, the more confidence that you'll get as time goes on. So practice makes perfect. Keep on working on your elements and check out the stickers, check out like the different motion graphics that you can add to really start to make your social media posts pop and have some personality so that you stand out from everybody else. Now, one really fun element that I want to point out and feature is the magic feature. And if you click on a section of writing, like this particular element here says, follow me on Instagram and get, let's combine this. So it's actually one element, all right? So let's just say, for example, it would be 25% off. Okay, so that everything would be in one box, all right? And let's make this bigger so that we can see it a little bit better. All right, there we go. You have follow me on Instagram and get 25% off. If you click on this magic right button, all of a sudden it's going to give you these drop down options. And essentially this is like AI technology built into Canva where if you're just kind of stumped on how to phrase something, you can come to the magic right option and it's gonna help you. So let's just say more fun and see what it says. Here we go. So it turned it into, want to save some cash? Hit that follow button on my Insta and get a juicy 25% off. Like, there's no way in hell I would have been able to think of that myself. <laughs> so that's a great example of this magic right button, how, you know, you can be stuck, but it's like this secret friend that you got there that can get you out of a bind and get those creative juices, juices flowing, all right? So... Like again, let's say uh, you didn't like this particular one. If we come back to Magic Right and we go more formal and we tone it back down, it'll say, interested in saving some money? Follow me on Instagram and receive a generous 25% discount. So it still has some personality, but it's not as like wild and out there as the first example. And when you compare it to what I wrote, which is super, super generic, this just sounds way better both ways, you know, the fun and the formal either way. So have, have fun with these. These are a, a ton of fun to just play around with and see where it goes. You know, you can just keep redoing it over and over and it'll keep chair. Uh, it'll keep changing it. So this is such a fabulous feature. Again, this is a pro feature. So I've already talked about several things so far on this video really about why the pro is worth it. And it just, it's going to take you to the next level, you know, so just give it that consideration. All right, now let's say that we're happy with this. Okay. And this is, again, this is super boring. I really didn't do anything with it, you know, but let's just say that we got it to a really cool place and we're ready to go with it. Now, what you can do is then save and export your designs. So in this top corner here, if you hit share, it's going to let you download it or share directly on social media. So if you link up your social media accounts, you literally don't even have to go to them to post on them. All right. So you can see Instagram is already here and all that stuff. And that is a huge time saver. It's just a lot of the tedious work that can give you burnout as a small business owner, as an artist, a crafter, all that stuff. One of the things that can trigger burnout is really just this back end, like administration type of work of keeping up your social media accounts. So the more that you can do to make things easier on yourself, the better. So use the built in shortcuts when you can and save yourself that extra time and effort. And so I'm going to roll right into my next tip, and that is to consider in house printing options directly from Canva. Okay, so. This right now is a video graphic, and you can tell by this play button up here in the top right-hand corner, it says 5.9 seconds. So that basically means that this is looping for about six seconds, okay? Let's turn this back into a static graphic, like meaning just an image. 
and give me a moment here, social media. And let's just say this is, um, actually, you know what? Let's turn this into a poster. Okay, so we have the option to do a flyer. So this would be like a regular size sheet of paper or a full 18 by 24 poster. Let's go ahead with that and say that you wanted this to be like a really, really big standout sign at your craft fair booth. This is actually kind of cool because it gives you a little bit of a preview, like compared to the size of these books, how big this is going to be. So let's go ahead and resize this design. There we go. We're going to take this off because this is turning it still into a video graphic. Okay. So if we take that off, you can see that play and that 5.9 seconds disappear. So now we're back to just a static graphic and image. And if we come up to the share button on the top, right now we can download it as you know, a JPEG, a PNG, a PDF, or as I mentioned before, we can go ahead and print on Canva. So let's check this out. We can print it as a sticker, all sorts of different shapes and configurations on a notebook, paper bag, mug, canvas, banners. It's the options truly are just about limitless on here. So whatever you need to print and design and put it on whenever you want, you can do it, you know? So all that you would have to do is just type in, in this search field for whatever you're looking for, and then go ahead and get started. So that is a great way to, again, like I said, save a bunch of time. Let's just say for argument's sake that you're going to turn this into, hmm, let's look for something kind of simple. Um, business cards. That's good. Okay, we're going to go with business cards and we're going to say portrait because this is kind of an up and down design. All right. And it'll ask you to resize the design. So again, we're going to go through another transformation here. And there we are. So you, again, you'd have to shift things around a little bit so that it makes sense on a business card, make it legible. Everything is big enough and easily readable. Then if we go down here, it's going to ask you a bunch of options. All right. So there's a front side, a back side, and the kind of paper that you want it to be printed on the kind of finish. So like a matte finish where it's a little bit more like rough, I guess. And then a glossy finish, a little bit more reflective. And then finally your quantity. Now, as you order more, your discount is going to get larger and larger. So for 50 business cards, it's $16. But if you double that up, you're only paying $5 more. Okay. So the, you can see here, it's like a progressive discount, the deeper into it you go. So when it comes to printing your materials, think about how many you're going to need right from the start and do yourself a favor and save that money where you can. So you would just continue through these steps and you would get these right in the mail. So again, this is all in house. It, they make it so, so easy as far as printing your materials, posting them to social media, saving them to your computer so that you can upload them whenever you want. It's all like a one-stop shop, you guys. And that's one of the things I love most about Canva. Okay. And then for this tip here, I'm going to go back to the main Canva page and we're going to talk about these tabs at the top. All right. So there's a lot of really nice things up in here that can help you. If we check out the design spotlight tab, we're going to see visual documents. So you can check out all of these photos and videos. They even have a video editor. So I've had a lot of questions about video editing and there's a few different options in here for editing. So you can play around with this and see if you can start to learn some basics on editing. And then of course, everything that they print that we, that we just looked at in the last segment and then marketing. All right. So we see logos, posters, flyers, brochures, all that stuff that we kind of touched on earlier as well. The business tab has a lot of features that are definitely worth looking into content creation, uh, brand man management. A lot of that stuff is good for small business owners. 
they have an education tab, which is pretty cool uh, just to be able to see like Canva's reach and the impact that they have in ways that you probably wouldn't have even considered. So a lot of teachers use this for um, building out their curriculum or making presentations, things like that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, a tab for the plans and pricing. So again, there's three main plans. You have the free plan, the pro plan, and then the team's plan. So there's a little bit of information on that. And then this learn tab. This is the one I wanted to talk about the most because they're constantly updating this tab. And there's a lot of features in here that go into detail on how to show you how to do really particular things on Canva. So if you wanna make a logo for your business, they can kind of walk you through that. And again, like, as, as I said before, this is constantly getting updated with updates and changes to Canva, new features that come out all these things. So this is something that you want to kind of keep an eye on regardless of if you're really using it as a tutorial. It's another way to just stay in the know on new things that are coming out and exciting new features with Canva. So one of the main things that I wanted to show you guys today was that I, I don't want anybody to be overwhelmed by designing their own graphics. It's a lot of fun. And like I said before, it's trial and error. Have fun with it. If you mess something up, who cares? You know, just start over and start fresh. The amount of designs that I have on Canva are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you can see there's hundreds, hundreds of designs. Okay. So just have fun with it and create things that you know, maybe it helps your business or maybe it's just for fun. You know, it doesn't even have to be something that's serious or even necessarily constructive. Use it as a source of entertainment too. Okay, so that was a basic overview of some of the features that are on Canva. And as I said before, the website has so many possibilities, almost limitless possibilities on there for how far you can push your branding and your marketing at your booth. If you guys like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, not only to help the algorithm and for this video to reach more people, but it also gives me an idea that you guys are liking this type of content and that I should consider making more. If you have ideas for specific tutorials that you might wanna see, drop a comment below and I can go ahead and make a video on more specific tutorials if you have something in mind. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.